Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and back with another video. Uh, this time I thought I'd do a sort of intro tutorial. I get a lot of questions about um, you know how I get started making things and how I got into this. So I kind of wanted to take you guys on a trip of um, just how, you know, if you guys want to integrate uh, microcontrollers into your own projects and make your own neat little things that, you know, you can use. Um, it's 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 a pretty good idea actually to start out with something like an Arduino I would suggest rather than trying to go about making your own board. So in this video I want to show you guys kind of um, how to hook up an Arduino, how to program it, and we'll do a quick little demo uh, program and I'll explain you know step by step as I go along uh, what exactly is happening. A company had sent me um, some of these parts to play around with and make some tutorial videos and. Um, they're a big supporter of uh, hobbyists like me. And um, so, yeah, I want to thank uh, the Amazon seller, Highlightco. And um, this is their website here. And, um, yeah, they have a lot of different uh, modules. And they contacted me and asked me, um, you know, after seeing a couple of my videos, I, I, I tend to use a lot of these modules. So they said, uh, would you like to um, review some of our, our work and then also make some uh, tutorial videos? And I said, sure. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah, uh, if you guys are interested, links will be down below, um, and you can get all the parts uh, that I'm going to use uh, through their Amazon store. But yeah, uh, we're just going to start out with uh, two wires, an Arduino um, Nano, uh, which is basically a uh, Pro Mini clone, I believe. And uh, this just needs a uh, mini USB here. And um, we are going to need additionally an LED and... Um, some resistors here. Actually, we're only going to need one resistor. So, um, I believe, so if this is running at 5 volts, 1K ought to do it. So I'm just going to grab a 1K resistor and then set this aside. So, okay, um, to wire it up. So one thing to note about the, the Arduino boards is that uh, pin 13 is usually always mapped to this LED, which is labeled L. And there are many different types of uh, Arduino boards. And this is another one. This is a uh, Uno clone. And um, these are all wired the same way. All the pin numbers are in kind of, you know, they're they're to the same pins on the chip. Uh, so any code that I write for this guy, I could instantly program to this guy and it'll work just fine. Absolutely no problems. Uh, so just as a bit of an introduction, uh, the Arduino is basically a, uh, well, it is an, an Atmel uh, 328P, um, clocked at 16 megahertz, and um, this guy in particular has ran off 5 volts logic. And it comes in different forms, whether it has a USB port or whether it just has a serial uh, interface pin set. And uh, in order to program these guys, the ones that have the USB ports are the most useful since you just plug them directly and then they just work. If not, you'll need what is known as a in in circuit or in serial uh, in circuit serial programmer, an ISP. And this guy I built um, using another one of these nano uh, units, and I'll show this off in a future video. Uh, if you have one of these guys, um, if you have a, just a bare uh, Atmel chip that's just um, on a circuit board or on a breadboard without a USB plug, I'm able to program any uh, Atmel chip just using. Uh, you know this header here but that'll be for a future video we're gonna stick with the USB right now because that's just so much easier to use so um, I guess let's just get into it so I'm gonna wire this up so anyway I said L is uh, pin 13 um, so the inputs are labeled um, D0 um, through to uh, D13 and um, there's several analog pins available too. So the D pins are digital inputs or outputs, and we can define that in software. And the analog pins A0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, et cetera, et cetera. These are analog input pins. Uh, you can use these to measure voltages. So you can make a, a voltmeter or like a, a, a relatively slow oscilloscope uh, using an Arduino if you wanted to. And I can show you that in a future video as well. But today we're just going to blink an LED basically and maybe do some fancy blinking. Uh, but anyway, um, so in order to wire this up, we can just grab uh, D2 here. And an LED. Remember the uh, longer lead on the LED is the positive. So we want it to turn on uh, when the pin is high. 
any piece of wire will work. And we're going to take this uh, to ground, which is the second pin from the end here. And this is going to complete the circuit. So when this pin D2 goes high, it'll go through the resistor to the LED, light the LED up, and then return back to ground. So that's the current path. So now I'm going to plug it into my computer. And the light comes on, the uh, power indicator light. And you see uh, D13 is blinking there. And so I'm going to go ahead to my uh, computer and open up the Arduino software, and I'll meet you there. Okay, so we have the Arduino software started up here. I happen to be running 1.6.6. This is an older version, uh, but a newer version will work just as well. So anyway, important things to uh, check. If you go up to the toolbar tools, uh, you want to double check that the board selection is Arduino Pro Mini. And processor is 18 mega 328, 5 volts, comma 16 megahertz. And under COM, uh, make sure it's uh, it's the right device. So if I unplug this, unplug it, and then I um, just open tools again, you can see that COM1 is actually the hardware serial port on my computer. But when I plug in the Arduino, a new COM will pop up. And that's how I know which... Um, which port is the actual Arduino. So I can just go back in and there, you could say, sometimes you have to reselect it. It says COM25, so I know this is my Arduino. Now we wanna go and uh, just select AVR ISP for this board because it has um, a USB port built in and um, we're good to go on that. So we're gonna go to file and then examples. We're just gonna open up the blink example. It'll open a new window, and here's a blink example. Okay, so in this example, um, basically they have the author's name and a short description of, um, of what the program actually does, how to hook it up, etc., etc. And so here we always have uh, two functions, basically. Um, we have a setup, uh, which sets everything up, obviously, as it's called. And we have a loop, which is the main part of the program that runs over and over again until you pull the battery or unplug it, basically. And so how, how this works is um, within the setup, we're going to, right now, pin 13 is set up as the output. Uh, but remember, on my board, I had wired, uh, you can see here, to uh, D2, my external LED. So, in order to set that up, you basically can just copy and paste or type this out. But instead of 13, now I want to say 2. And we want it to be an output as well. And remember, always uh, to double check, you have a semicolon at the end of an instruction. Um, otherwise, you're going to get compilation errors. So now we have pin 2 as an output as well. And... So within loop, so once it sets these up as outputs, it enters loop, and then when it gets to the bottom of this bracket here, it'll go back to the top of the loop, which is this line, and it keeps going in circles over and over again. So anyway, at the top of the loop, um, we can see this digital write instruction, and this basically tells the Arduino to uh, pull that pin either high or low. If it's an output, like, 12, or like 2 and 13 are currently, um, we can tell it to digitally write a 1 or a 0, basically 0 volts or 5 volts on, the, on that pin. And so here you can see we're telling, hey, uh, pin 13, you go high now. And then we have a delay, which is a function that waits this number of milliseconds. So right now this is set to 1,000, so that's a 1 second delay. And finally, we just tell it to set pin 13 low again. And then we delay again. So basically what this does is it blinks on, it waits a second, it blinks off, it waits a second. And then it blinks on again, it waits a second, and et cetera, et cetera. So basically it just blinks on and off. Uh, so we want to actually change this. Um, so I'm going to go in here and copy and paste. You know, most of uh, programming is actually copy and paste in code, not necessarily writing everything. But we're going to go in here and tell it, uh, pin 2, we want it to make it low. So what I am actually doing is having the LEDs alternate so that one's high, one's low, one's high, one, you know, basically alternates like that. So I'm just going to go in here again, copy, 
paste. But here I want to set this high. And I just realized I put this in the wrong place. So the reason why we need these delays in here is the chip is running so fast. It's running, basically each one of these lines is running, um, you know, one sixteen millionth of a second. So you, you can obviously see this is going to be faster than you can even blink. Uh, so if we didn't have this delay in here, both LEDs would always look like they're on, which kind of defeats the purpose um, for a blinky toy. So uh, basically... We know what it's going to do, so all we have to do is compile and program. So to compile, we just go up here. Um, so if you click this button, the check mark, it'll uh, compile the code, but it won't program it. This is useful to tell you if there's problems with the code, but you don't want to necessarily burn uh, the, the code to the chip yet. If you click this uh, upload button, it'll compile and it'll program. So I'm going to... Um, expand this part here and this is uh, basically the output of the compiler it'll spit out information as it's processing the code uh, to let you know if there's any problems or what it's doing so we're just going to upload now and uh, I'm going to keep this in frame to show you guys what happens so when I click upload it's going to go through and actually um, look at my code and it brings up a whole bunch of different files and whatnot and it generates different files um, so it's going to go through here, and it says it's compiling. Now we're to the point where it's programming. You can see the other LEDs uh, lit up very quickly there. Actually, hopefully I had that in frame. Uh, we can do that very quickly again. Uh, you'll see these two arcs and TX LEDs will actually light up real quick. There we go. And once they turn off, it's done programming. Now the my code that I just wrote, this code right here, is running on this chip. And you can see the LEDs are alternating. When this one's on, this one's off. When this one's on, this one's off. So yeah, uh, let's see. Maybe make this a little more interesting. I'm just going to lower this portion right here. Let's make it a little faster. Um, not too much faster, but we'll make it, uh, let's see, maybe three times faster, about. So I'm going to set it. Uh, the delay to uh, 300 milliseconds, which is a third of a second, and reprogram. And that should be quite a bit faster. There you can see. Let's make it even faster. <laughs> Let's bring this down to um, a tenth of a second. There we go. It's really fast. Now, like I was saying before, let's um, actually remove these delays. So to comment something out, basically everything green, like uh, the words explaining what the line does, is known as a comment. And this doesn't affect the code. It's ignored by the compiler. But it allows uh, the programmer to leave a little note, basically for himself or someone else looking at the code so that they know what, what's happening. Uh, so we're just going to comment this out these two delays uh, because I want to show you what happens if you don't have delays in and it, it lights up and turns on the LED on and off so fast that you can't see it. So we're just going to recompile and you can see the old code was running on here in a second. It's reprogramming and this is the new code. It is turning them on and off very fast. It's just so fast that you can't see it. Now if you were to wave the LED. You can see how you can now see where it turns on and off. Um, that's basically the persistence of vision effect. But yeah, you can definitely see it is turning it on and off. Um, if I wave it real fast here, you can see where it's on and there's a gap where it's off. But if you're just staring at it straight on, both of them look on to me. Anyway, yeah, this was a uh, quick video just introducing you guys to, uh, to using an Arduino. And um, yeah, um, these are really easy to use. They're easy to integrate into projects. Uh, you don't have to solder pin headers. You can solder wires directly in there. But I like soldering the headers so you can plug into a breadboard like this. Yeah, so um, all in all, this is actually a really easy thing to, to get into. Um, if you guys have any questions or if, if you have any ideas for projects that um, 
maybe simple things that we can make in the future beyond just blinking LEDs. Um, let me know in the comments down below and I can maybe um, make up a short, quick little project um, and make a tutorial video for you guys. But anyway, yeah, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Highlight Go. Um, basically provided all the, the materials for this video. And um, yeah, thank you guys. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next one. Bye.